video here, and I wanted to, uh, um, you know, not get too biblical or religious or anything like that, but um, this is a very good little uh, passage talking about people building their, uh, maybe their 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 house on the rock or the sand. So this is talking about Matthew 7, 24 through 27, the wise and the foolish builder. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and put them into practice like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on a rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell to a great crash. So I'm not going to get into the whole side of, of the, the, the biblical side of this, but I'm, I'm talking more about the financial house that you're building. Are you building this on a rock or are you building on the sand? And most people, in my opinion, uh, they think, okay, you got there. They have three options, or their main option is I'm going to build up my savings and hope that my money outlives me. They, or they could do and say, well, I have a you know they're going to wait to go in and to, to park money somewhere until they have a larger sum of money. They get started late and then they never tap into that power of compound interest. Well, infinite banking gives you a, a whole different spin, and it, and it basically gives you a contractual guarantee, growth, tax free gains, and your money always outlives you. So you're creating generational wealth. So let's get into this and let's see here what um, what a lot of people do. I want to ask you a question here. So, if you're gonna, are you gonna build your financial house on the sand? So let's let me ask you this question. Let's say that you and I are gonna start a business. Okay, I'm gonna ask you to go into business with me, and we plan on making a ton of money. Okay, but here are my requirements to be my partner. Number one, I want you to put up all the capital, the initial capital, and then when the business needs more money injected, we ask you for those additional funds. Okay, I want you to take all the risks. I need you to ride the ebbs and the flows of the market. Okay, I'm not taking on those risks. You do. And then also, I need you to pay someone to manage our business every day, every week, every month, and every year. I don't want to be a part of that, but I want you to pay for that management. But then after 30 years of business growth, hopefully over time we start our business, 30 years later, we're going to want to retire and cash out of this business. I get to come back and I get to choose how much profit split I get to take and I want. Maybe it's 30%, maybe it's 60%. It doesn't matter what you want. You did all the work, yet I get to decide how much I, how much I want to take from you. Are you in or are you out on that business? Well, what if I told you that 75% of Americans take this deal? It's actually probably more than that. But there's $19 trillion that are locked into a 401k. This is exactly what people do. If you look back in here, Uncle Sam forces you to put money into a into an account that you can never even tap into until you're 59 and a half. Think about this. What if you had an idea, I want to be an outstanding citizen and a person I want to retire at 45, and you've been parking money in a 401k or an IRA. You can't even touch that money for 15 years before you retire, which is crazy to me. But this is what Uncle Sam does is they say, okay, look, you put up all the capital, you take all the risks, and then you pay a money manager to manage it for you. And then after however many years it's been, quote unquote, growing in this account, they get to take a profit share of it. And right now, yeah, there's a certain percentage of whatever the cap, whatever your income tax rate is, but are taxes going to go up? Let's find out. So that's what Americans do is they park these, these their hard-earned cash in a black hole. They pray for 30 years, pay a money babysitter to watch their cash, and then whatever Uncle Sam deans is fair, that's how much they're going to get taxed. So let's let's you know not get political here, but are taxes going to go up or are they going to go down? So especially if people that are that are in their 30s and 40s and 20 years from now. Who knows what the tax rates are going to be? So I would be willing to bet that our taxes are going to go up. So as you can see in this strategy, this is basically a race against time. We, we don't have any control over money the entire time. We just pray that we put money into this black hole. 30 years later, we turn around and we hope that there's more money in it. And then we pray that our money outlives us. So this is how we build a financial house on a rock. So if, any, if, if anyone's here has ever heard, I, I, would, I would ask them to go and check out what a bully is, which is a bank-owned life insurance policy. And it is exactly what it sounds like. It's life insurance purchased by banks to leverage their cash as a tax shelter for their owners and their employees. So banks are pumping billions of dollars into these contracts, and there's a lot of politicians are too. But let's talk about banks. They're pumping billions of dollars into these contracts every single year because they know that they can allow their money to grow tax-free, uninterrupted compounding for their employees and their owners. And so my question is, is if banks are pumping billions into these infinite banking policies, why aren't we doing what banks are doing? Wouldn't that make the most sense? The banks have the biggest buildings in all in every single city in every single state. 
So the reason behind this is simple. These insurance companies can basically promise and guarantee things that banks can't and they won't promise. Bank insurance companies can promise contractual guaranteed competitive rates of return. They can guarantee and promise tax-free gains. They can, and your money always outlives you with it, with creating that generational wealth because of a death benefit. We don't structure these infinite banking policies for death benefit. We structure them for cash, but also it's a nice box to check thinking, okay, at the end of the day, I'm going to have a couple million dollars of death benefit that I can pass on tax-free to my beneficiaries and my heirs. So I wanted to look at a a quick illustration here of this is just a, a, a Johnny Appleseed, as you can see up here in the top left-hand corner. This guy's 30 years old. He's a preferred plus. Um, this is a lot of people starting out, um, starting to save into their 401k, starting to save into their IRAs. And remember, we're not talking investing. We're talking savings. There's a difference here. Investing's we're trying to reach for that higher rate of return. Here, we're talking about savings. We have cash earmarked for a purchase. We're earmarking cash for something. And in this particular situation, most people would say, oh, we're going to park money and invest in, in some type of IRA or 401k for a savings account for retirement, okay? But let's just look at what Johnny Appleseed's doing right here, okay? Like I said, this is just a simple illustration. And you can see there, there's a lot of numbers going on right now. That's not what's important. I want us to look over here on this right-hand side, these three, these, these columns over here. You can see the cash outlay, the cash value, and the death benefit, okay? Every single year, he's pumping in about 27000 into his savings, into his savings. And after 10 years, okay, after 10 years, he's put, well, he's put in 4000 or he's put in 27, four years in a row, and then he's dropped it down to 9600 for the first 10 years, um, uh, eight years, excuse me. Excuse me, for eight years. And now look, nothing crazy has happened. 156,000 bucks, and he's got about $161,000 of cash value. Nothing crazy has happened in the first 10 years of this, okay? But remember, this is savings. It's almost like I said, you're, we're, we're, we're taking money out of our bank account in our left pocket and putting into one of these policies in our right pocket, okay? Savings account, nothing has crazy happened. Yet we got a death benefit over here, $1.438 million. That's a nice little touch. But then he drops it off, and you can see $0. He puts $0. By the way, these contracts go all the way to your 121 years old. So this is only showing literally half of the entire illustration. But that's not the point today. But you can see he stops putting money into this thing for the rest of his life. Okay, And look what happens after 10 years. He's only pumped 156. He's got 250 grand. And he's got a death benefit of eight. And the reason they do that, they paid up reduced, rate up reduced, paid up rider, which basically just says you're not putting another dollar in here. Now, this is contractually guaranteed. You have a guaranteed death benefit for the rest of your life that continues to grow. So the next the next 10 years, $156,000. He's got three hundred eighty six grand of cash value in his savings account. And so I guess what I'm asking people is, is if you... Think about an investment over here. What if you could park money into something that that you don't ever you stop putting money into and over 20 30 years you've almost tripled your money and you're not even investing. It's a savings account. What if you were parking that money in a bank account at uh Wells Fargo or Regions Bank? You're not going to get anywhere near this type of growth that's contractually guaranteed with the death benefit. So let's look at what happens if we want to turn this on even more. We actually want to become our own bankers and become an infinite banking uh, person. We want to partner with the insurance company on this. Look at this. So same thing, 27000 for the first four years, but then he just continues to use this as his bank account, okay? As, as, as every single day, he's able to have access to every single dollar of this cash value whenever he wants. It's like a bank account. It's the same thing, only we're taking money out of our bank and we're parking it with an insurance company for those reasons. Look at this, 165000 after 10 years. He's got 178. dollars Nothing crazy, nothing to write home and bomb about. You know, $1.448 million death benefit. But then he pumps in two sixty one. dollars He's got three eighty two, dollars three fifty seven. dollars Six ninety one. He's only got seven hundred thousand dollars of tax of, of tax free gains, in a one point seven nine four million dollar debt. I mean, he's almost got a two million dollar death benefit here at sixty five. When things really start to uh, blow up, where you're thinking about retiring. So, I want everyone to just consider something for a second and realize that. Imagine this being your four hundred one k your IRA. I would I would uh, gamble with anybody that could. In 30 years, tell me I put in 
$357,000 and they could know exactly what number that they would have uh, in their 401k or their IRA. It, it would be impossible to, to tell. But here, this is contractually guaranteed. You can look, you can forecast out, oops, you can forecast out 30 years into advance and know exactly what dollar amount you're going to have while all this is being available in, ta- in cash value. And then if something, if someone does have a bad day, you get $1.923 million in a death benefit. It's hard for me to, to um, I guess, it, 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 you know, this is the way that I look at things. And I think, okay, I want to always have my cash working. We're going to go and invest in money or in, in, in deals and real estate or purchase new cars or buy our kids education, things like that. You have to pull money from somewhere. Why don't we enhance that our location of our cash and then go and deploy it? Every single day, I can go and buy an investment for $382,000, and then the next year, that cash value, while I go and invest my money, grows to $407,000. So every single year, no matter if you pull this cash value out or you don't, it continues to contractually grow into oblivion forever, and that's how people become infinite bankers. If this is something that's interesting to you or th- this could be beneficial to you, I, I would I would hope that you reach out to me and let's get on a call, let's get on an email, and let's discuss how you can become your own banker.